Welcome to this special online service as we celebrate 70 years of God's faithfulness. Bless the Lord, O you angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless, Bless the, Lord, the Lord, all, all his souls, his, his servants who do, who do his, his will. And all the angels stand around the throne, and they fall down before God and worship, saying, Blessing and, and glory and wisdom and, wisdom and power and, and might be to our, our God, God forever and ever. And ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Creator God, as we gather virtually to worship you today and to offer, offer you thanks and praises for 70 years of faithfulness, pour your Holy Spirit upon your people and grant us a new vision for the next chapter in our lives of your faithful servant. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray together the colic for purity. Almighty God, God to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Now come to a time of penitence. The Lord is graceful, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. Let us therefore now confess our sins, trusting in God's willingness to forgive, as we say together, Almighty, Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, in penitence, in penitence we, we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault 
and in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. May the God of all time and all ages, God who has power to liberate all, forgive your sins and free you from them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we pray, we call it God, God of all, all faithfulness. faithfulness. You, you led your people from bondage into, into the, the promised land. land. May, May you continue to guide and lead us as you have done over the last 70 years, that we would remain your faithful people through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21 beginning at verse 23. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? they asked. And who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism. Where did it come from? Was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it amongst themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Then he said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later, he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. This is the Gospel of Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, friends, and welcome once again on this, the feast day of St. Michael and all angels. Today, both in terms of our in-person service and, uh, and online, we are marking a very special occasion. It is not only our patronal festival, which we would ordinarily mark on, on the Sunday closest to the 29th of September, but it is also the occasion of our 70th anniversary. So we are celebrating 70 years of ministry of the parish of St. Michael's. And many of you would have seen, I have no doubt, that over the course of the last year, even longer than the last year, a whole team of people has been involved in coordinating and planning various events to commemorate this great occasion. Uh, from the Ladies High Tea, which was held in August last month, uh, to the commemorative candles sold by the parish, 
to the various commemorative videos that have been published both online and in terms of our in-person -pers services. Um, these all have been aimed at marking this occasion and from this it is clearly evident how hard the, the parish and in indeed this team that has been dedicated to the efforts, uh, how hard they've been working to um, celebrate this momentous milestone. So what then to say from a theological point of view in the context of this online service? Well, um, perhaps we can begin by considering the occasion of our patronal festival, again, which we would have done so anyway, and then in the context of the 70 years of ministry, which we are looking back on, and then finally briefly going forward to try and envisage something of God's providential care for us even as we look forward to another 70 years of God's faithfulness. So our gospel reading for the feast day may give us the initial impression of not being entirely relevant because it speaks primarily of children. Um, but of course it says, it, it suggests in the closing verse of this passage that um, God's, God's angels in, in particular have an, a vested interest in protecting and guiding uh, children. And perhaps historically and in, in, in a somewhat caricatured way, angels such as cherubs are often depicted as children. And, and perhaps this is because there is a closeness or parallel between the innocence of children and that of angels. But a more realistic appraisal of angels or angelic beings is that they are actually amoral or, or morally neutral. They're neither good nor bad, um, but they are very powerful. And so because of this fact, they are potentially dangerous if you get on the wrong side of an angel. Um, but the fundamental or defining feature or hallmark of angels is that they work at God's behest. So just to provide two examples, Satan was supposed to have been an angel, um, but in the book of Job we, we, see part, we see that he is part of the heavenly council and that he still at that point works at God's behest and was sent to test Job. We also see in the famous story in Numbers 21, um, as a punishment for their disobedience, there are, are in the Hebrew uh, original, there are literally seraphim, or depending on the context, fiery serpents or angelic beings, seraphim who are sent to punish the, um, the Israelites. But apart from the dramatic or ap apocalyptic scene set in the book of Revelation, which detail Michael's final war against Satan, there's relatively little else said about angels in the New Testament. One of the aspects which we could do well to consider is that there appears to be a basis which is, is in some ways contrary to what we've just said, a basis for understanding the appearance of angels not in terms of uh, brilliant and bright radiant light, but sometimes as seemingly ordinary looking people. So for example, on the day of the resurrection in Mark's gospel, Mark records a tradition that inside the tomb there is a man dressed in, in, a, in a white robe, and note that it says a man, not an angel, who's dressed and seated inside the tomb. Uh, but then this tradition is developed. In Luke, it is, not, uh, is now not only one man, there are two men, and Luke tells us, although there are still men, they're dressed in clothes of dazzling white. And then by the time uh, Matthew records his version, we have a fully-fledged angel of the Lord appearing at the tomb. And then, of course, there is the injunction in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, not to neglect to entertain strangers because we thereby unknowingly entertain angels on occasion. And so with many aspects of our faith, Christians understand that Jesus initiated a new period or a new epoch whereby the ministry, life, death, and resurrection of Christ is a watershed moment, which is also the defining feature of our faith, of our faith as Christians. And so, for example, where Jesus calls Nathaniel in the opening chapter of John's Gospel from underneath the fig tree, he suggests, he suggests that there will come a time when the angels of God are seen to ascend and descend on the Son of Man. And it's hearkening back to Jacob's ladder. But it, it means in the context of John's Gospel, in the context of the greater uh, schema of the Christian faith, 
that Jesus as the Son of Man became through his death and, resur and resurrection a gateway to heaven. And it also suggests that just as had been the case under the previous dispensation, where the angels uh, worked in subservience to God, so now they work in subservience and at the behest of Christ. They work as ministers of Christ and in the interests of Christ and Christ's kingdom. Now they say, as we draw to the end of this reflection, that the patron saint of any parish is meant to color, shape, or inform the character and life of that parish. In our own case, and on this very auspicious occasion, I would suggest that in addition to St. Michael and all angels shaping the character of this parish, that we too, in a special way, enjoy their care and protection, the care and protection offered to us by St. Michael and his heavenly host. So certainly as we look back over the last 70 years in the life of the parish of St. Michael's, this must be clearly evident. And so in other words, the parish has enjoyed not just the faithfulness, guidance, and provision of God, but so too has enjoyed the protection and guidance of St. Michael and all angels. Now I know uh, for some Anglicans the notion of praying to saints is a concept which perhaps is foreign to them or a concept which perhaps does not sit well and that's, that's perfectly fine. This comes from, as, an, as Anglicans, we have a mixed heritage of both Catholicism and Protestantism. So this obviously comes from our Catholic heritage. So while the notion of praying to saints for help or guidance might still sit unwell with some, I would encourage us on this feast day of St. Michael and all angels to invoke the uh, care, protection, and indeed guidance of St. Michael and his heavenly host. And certainly as we look forward now to what, what God willing will be another 70 years of, of faithfulness to the parish of St. Michael's, let us pray fervently that God would guide us, but, but in addition to God's guidance, that St. Michael and all his angels would watch over us. And in closing, I leave us with a quote, a very famous quote from Psalm 91, uh, which is a reminder again of God's protection, most especially of the protection of God's angels, that God will command his angels concerning us, that they will guard us in all our ways, that on their hands they will bear us up, lest we dash our feet against stones. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. As we say together, we believe in one God, God the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God our Father. Gracious Father, by his blood Christ has ransomed us to you and has made us a kingdom and priest to you, our God. As the angels minister to you in heaven, strengthen your church to serve you here on earth. 
We pray for the Anglican Communion for Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury. We pray for the Anglican Church of Southern Africa and for Archbishop Tabo. And we pray for our diocese and our diocesan bishop, Steve. Strengthen your ministers, both lay and ordain, to serve you faithfully on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of all creation, when the angels greeted the birth of your son, they sang for joy, glory to God and peace on earth. Bless what Christ peace the nations of the world. We pray especially for warring nations and for all regions affected by armed conflict of any kind. Protect those vulnerable and convict those with authority and power that we may all come to love in a more peaceful and just world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, Hear our prayer. Almighty Father, your Son has promised to your children the care of the guardian angels who look upon your face. Protect by your mercy your neighbors, families, friends, and all those with special claims upon us. We pray for children and grandchildren, those near to us and those far away, that they may grow up with a deep and abiding love for you, and help us all to come to a joyful resurrection in your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. God of courage and consolation, you give your angels charge over those who trust in you to guard them in all their ways. Be with those in trouble, sorrow, need, or sickness. We pray especially for those on our pew leaflet and, in, and, and on our prayer chain. Help us to see your hand in all trials and adversities and strengthen us to remain faithful to you and to continue serving you truly all the days of our life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Amen. our prayer. Father in heaven, your angels declare, Blessed are the dead to die in the Lord. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds, and fold in your love all who are recently bereaved. We remember to all those who have gone before us, especially those whose years mind occurs this week. You have promised that those who mourn shall be comforted. Help us to find our comfort and healing in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, the angels sing by day and night around your throne. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, with Michael, Prince of the Angels, who contends by our side, with Gabriel, your hero, herald, who brings glad tidings, with Raphael, the protector, who minister your healing, and with the whole company of heaven. We worship you, we give you glory, we sing your praise and exalt you forever. Accept these our prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We now pray over the offering. On this occasion of our 70th anniversary, we thank you once more for your great faithfulness towards us. Accept these, our tithes and offerings, not only as tokens of our gratitude, but as signs of our rededication to you. May us, our children and our children's children, continue worshipping you in this place for another 70 years. And may we forever sing your praises. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.
People of God, you have seen how God is faithful to generation upon generation. Go now and tell of God's marvelous works and of how much God has done for us. Proclaim his works among the nation. And may the blessing of God, all compassionate and all loving creator, redeemer and sustainer, be upon you and those you love now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.